then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And we're going to verse 5. When have you actually opened the Bible like that? I think there's probably a handful of people in here that have done it. But you know what my fear is? There's probably a handful of people that never have in here. They've never applied. They've never got the safety in the big picture. They've never received comfort from the scriptures. They don't know what these treasures are. They, they still think the world has something to offer, if you get me. They want to go seek the treasures out there, not realizing there was treasures in the Bible the whole time. You know, you can look at themes of books and you can get a blessing. You know, uh, I've heard a, a theme of uh, Hebrews could be better things. You know, we have a better mediator. Amen. We have a better testament. Right. Isn't it Old Testament. Isn't New Testament better than Old Testament? Yeah. It's better. Amen. Everything we have through the Lord Jesus Christ is better than anything the Old Testament had to offer. You tell that to a Hebrew Israelite right there. They want to put you back under the law of bondage. Tell them. You know, uh, I, had, I had one of those fellows come to me at the track table, and uh, I said, you're a Christian. He said, yes, sir, I'm a Christian. But he's trying to tell me how he's the real Jew and stuff. And I said, but you're a Christian. He says, yes, I'm a Christian. I said, well, really, the, everything you've been talking about the last five minutes just reminds me of one thing. He's like, what's that? There's neither Jew nor Greek. Remember, there's three audiences, Jew, Gentile, church. And if you're the church, you're not even associated with Jew or Gentile anymore. You're a complete different individual, completely. God doesn't want you to go back to your Gentile ways or your Jewish ways. Huh. Isn't that something? You're a new creation, new creature. And, um, well, how about this? The book of Isaiah, 66 chapters. How many, Bible, how many books are in the Bible? 66. 66. And guess what? What's interesting about the book of Isaiah is in a lot of the chapters, you can find a theme of that book of the Bible in the book of Isaiah. Uh, go to the last chapter of Isaiah. Randy, are we ever leaving? If you got to go, man, you got to do what you got to do. But we're almost done, I promise. What are we going to do? Well, I'm just showing you some parallels with the book of Revelation in Isaiah 66. And this is not exhaustive. You could probably find more examples than I'm going to show you right now. But look at verse 6. A voice a noise from the city, a voice from the temple. From the temple. Well, if this applied to Revelation, what is it? It's a rebuilt temple. All right? Keep going. Uh, look at verse 7. Before she travailed, she brought forth her pain, came. She was delivered of a man-child. Go to Revelation 12:5. I'll read it for sake of time. Revelation 12, 5. Oh, let me get there. I was in Romans for some reason. Revelation 12, 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Weird. Um, what else we got here? Oh, yeah. Look at uh, verse 15 in Isaiah 66. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and rebuke with flames of fire. Go to Revelation 19, 15. Revelation 19, 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Is there another one? Let me see. Go to verse 18, Isaiah 66, 18. For I know their works, their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. 
Go to Revelation 19 again. Look at verse 17 and 18. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, All the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. I've never heard that supper preached on, by the way. That's an interesting supper. Uh, we, we always talk about the marriage supper of the Lamb. You know, uh, he's going to give these birds, these fowl, a supper of their own. You, you ever had one of those, like, birds, like, out on your porch, like, making all this noise? And they're, you just get some, maybe they're, like, already looking at, at us humans wondering about, like, man, I can't wait till our supper's coming, you know? <laughs> I throw rocks at them. Verse 18, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and the flesh of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. He calls these nations together. And then go to the last verse in Isaiah 66, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be a pouring unto all flesh. Look at Revelation 20. Look at verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. What am I showing you? Well... Maybe some treasures. If what I showed you is actually true, and you can search it out yourself, there's a lot more. There's 66 chapters, 66 books. Research it yourself. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. But if that was true, that God confirmed the size of his canon in the book of Isaiah, you realize the Apocrypha doesn't fit now? You realize that the gospel of Judas and the gospel of Mary Magdalene, there's no room for them. It's already a closed canon, bro. 66 books. We call it the 66 caliber. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to read a little excerpt. Uh, a guy named uh, David Hoffman, he wrote this, and I think it's pretty good. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's like a whole page, but um, it says this about the Pauline epistles. The themes of each letter mark the steps of growth for the New Testament Christian. Romans reveals the foundation of truth of justification by grace through faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. The next letter to follow Romans is written to baby or carnal Christians. It's a growth process. Uh, let's skip over to Galatians. Galatians is preserved to combat the error of using outward circumstances and convictions in order to determine the inward working of the Spirit. The theme of Galatians is a believer is not only justified by grace through faith, but the believer is also sanctified by grace through faith. Ephesians provides a detailed study of the salvation of the believer and the proper method of growth and service through the fullness of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Uh, joy is the theme of Philippians, and it is the outward characteristics that sinners observe most in the believer. The joyous Christian is warned in the next book, Colossians, to beware of philosophy, tradition, and vain deceit in Laodicean age. The two letters to the Thessalonians provide the fundamentals of the faith for a model walk and work of the believer. The letters to Timothy instruct the soldiers and students of Christ in the leadership of the church. Titus is like a field manual for the soldier on the battlefield. The letter to Philemon is the shortest letter and the last letter of doctrinal issues for the New Testament believer. It reveals the highest calling for any saint as true servants of Christ. Interesting. How did he find that? He backed up. And he said, there could be something more here than meets the eye. Now, there's, there's uh, churches that say, if you don't teach verse by verse, bless God, you ain't teaching Bible. 
And there is a, there is a forum for that. We're going to talk about that next month, the microscopic uh, method, where you're going to take word, 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 you know, and verse by verse, there's an application there. But at the same time, there's an application here too. You see? And there's treasures in the big picture. There's comfort in the big picture if you need it. There's safety in the big picture, rightly dividing. All right, let's go ahead and stand. Hopefully the Lord gave you a blessing today.